Well, we're creating a new technology in the drying industry, and it's designed to dry very high quality food, biological materials, retaining very high levels of nutrients, colors, flavors, bioactivity. And we're looking to replace some of the old standards in the market. Technologies like spray drying and air drying that are large scale, but they use a lot of heat, which damages those, those attributes. And freeze drying, which is a, uh, preserves the attributes, but it's very slow and requires a lot of capital and energy costs. So we really are looking to create a revolution and really fundamentally change the way the world is, is drying materials in, in a whole wide range of market sectors. We met for the very first time together in May last year, uh, so it's been about a year, and uh, we've had very substantial progress. We've had a big increase in, in our market capitalization, uh, our share price, our effective liquidity of the shares, and it's really been driven by the success of the company and its business plan. We've gone from one multinational partnership back when we talked last year. We now have four major companies from Denisco, who is in the probiotic market, to Nestle, who's the largest food company in the world, uh, Grupo Bimbo, which is a leading food company in the Latin American Mexican market, and also a world-leading baking company, and a company called Grimway Farms, which is in the, the leading producer in the world of organic carrots and vegetables. So we've built a broad range of new partnerships to develop the technology. We've also raised substantial capital. Over 20 million of equity was raised. It's allowed us to expand our platforms. So we now have new platforms, including a new QuantaRev technology, which we announced early this year, which will be very large in scale and help us uh, compete more against the larger scale spray dryers and air dryers. We've also been very busy acquiring patents. We bought the patents back from the University of British Columbia which allows us to take full control and have no further obligations of sharing royalties and things in the future. We also bought the U.S. patents of a competitor, Hans Binder, and have now full control of the North American market with their MyVap technology, and also a global relationship to help develop their technology with other global partners, and a long-term supply arrangement with them for delivering. They're very, very good quality machine builder, and that's uh, a partnership now that we can build on. So we've been very, very busy, and those have helped us move forward. And yesterday, we also announced the first major commercial license with a company called Mill Fruits, and it's a U.S. Uh, company that's been around since 1956 in the fruit market, and they are buying a, a MyVap machine uh, delivered by our partner Binder, and uh, we have uh, a royalty license, and uh, we'll be involved in the development of various products in the, in the fruit market. So we're very excited and uh, we've got a lot of momentum. Well, this year we have five major focus areas. As you know, we've been working on the probiotic technology with Denisco for, for a number of years. We went from a very small scale to a, a bigger engine that we proved worked very well. Now we've built a continuous pilot machine and we're testing that right now in Vancouver. Our target is to complete that in Vancouver this summer, move it to Denisco's operation in the U.S., and have them complete testing and sign a license and a commercial order by the end of this year. We're working towards building a broader pipeline of interest in different areas, so we hope to announce at least two of these kind of relationships this year to expand our pipeline from four to six. We see some of them have more than one area in those big companies that might uh, be interested in the technology. So we'd like to see ourselves expand into some of those new, new areas with the current customers. We also have a new platform, QuantaRev, which is a large-scale technology I mentioned where we hope to compete with the bigger-scale drying methods. And our plan right now is to start the very first pilot machine of that technology this, uh, by June and we're just in the final stages of assembling. We already have one of our customers going to be testing and some other big companies also interested in that. Our fifth focus is really in the pharmaceutical market. We've developed a single vial technology to do vaccines and antibodies. We've worked with the Saskatchewan Research Council and got very good testing results in December, we announced, where we were able to produce and dry in less than an hour what it takes 42 hours to freeze dry very comparable results. 
We're now building a 250 vial bigger scale and that's going to go back to them by September for starting a secondary testing phase. Uh, we're also looking at potential partnerships in that market as well. So that's the focus for us this year and we feel very confident we're going to meet our, our expectations. We use a microwave energy and we use it under a vacuum. And what the vacuum does is allows us to adjust the atmosphere. So the boiling point is moved from 100 degrees all the way down to very low temperature, usually under, under room temperature. We can also bring it down into the frozen state. So what we can do is we can either accelerate freeze drying much faster than the conventional method, or we can dry above freezing but at a very gentle temperature, which allows us to preserve all of those nutrients, flavors, colors, textures, bioactivity with, with a much faster uh, process and more efficient process than conventional freeze drying. Today we have really two strategies. One is to replace freeze drying and we have a number of platforms positioned in vials, in, in powders, in, in direct drying of foods. And we also are now building the larger scale QuantaRev, which would be more targeted against spray drying or air drying, that can be very large and efficient, but much higher quality in terms of the end product because we don't have the sort of heat damage that they typically would have. There's just so many different areas that you would, you would find uh, dehydrated products. It's a, it's a very massive market. And uh, if you look at it, you, you see products such as food, uh, you know, you, you have uh, dried berries and f vegetables, either as a snack product, in cereals, in areas where you have in bars where they're doing cereal bars. Uh, you also see them in the baking industry where they, they dry them so that they can basically preserve the flavors and the, and the colors and things and make them very rich in nutrition, but they don't have to refrigerate and, because that's very expensive. Also, everything you eat today has some form of protein, probiotic, food culture that's added. These are very large industries and typically they dehydrate a lot, a lot of those materials so that they can again have efficiency in the processing, delivery, storage, and it's easier for the manufacturers to manufacture adding powders or additives in like that as opposed to trying to, uh, to do it with sort of fresh or live active, active ingredients. Other markets include the pharmaceutical market for vaccines, antibodies. In a liquid form, they typically last three or four months. They need to be refrigerated from the time they're produced to the time they're used. When you dehydrate them, you can extend the shelf life to maybe a few years. Uh, you also can reduce uh, the requirements for some of the refrigeration, so it can be less costly as well. We see other areas like enzymes, biofuels, food areas like uh, for feed and applications like that. In the, in the uh, wine and, and spirit area. Again, they're a type of material that needs to be dried carefully and, uh, and we think our technology has an opportunity there.